So sex form is a really weird time because you're sort of in this gray area between university and school and you're given a lot of control over your life and a lot of the things that you're studying. But it can be difficult because up to now you've probably been spoon fed a lot of the information and you probably don't really know how to learn something on your own. You might be really good at revising and you might be really good at, you know, learning vocabulary and learning facts and learning information, but when it comes to doing well at A-levels, it's not so much about learning pieces of information than it is being able to analyse those pieces of information. And if you can't do that on your own, you're going to struggle. So how exactly do you pick up this new way of learning? Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Akshi, I'm a second year medic at Imperial College London, and today I thought we'd talk very briefly, very quickly, about some of the things that I did at sixth form. Now, for me, I went to a school which went all the way up to year 13, so we sort of had our own sixth form in our school, but I know a lot of you guys out there are probably, you know, at schools which run up to year 11, and after that you go to a college, or you go to another school, and you start your sixth form life new. So, hopefully this video will maybe break down a lot of things that you might come into contact with. So timestamps will be down below to all of the issues that I'm going to talk about throughout this video, and uh, also if you're new to the channel, um, please do subscribe. We are, I believe, at 450 subscribers, somewhere around that. Um, so if you could subscribe and get us to 500 subscribers, that would be super cool. Um, but if you don't, that's also cool. And also, if you'd like to like the video, um, that would also go a long way. So yeah, uh, let's get straight into the video. The first thing I want to talk about is this misconception that sixth form are basically years where you don't really have to do too much work. You know, you get a lot of free time, you can do whatever you want. Uh, this isn't necessarily true. Yes, you get a lot of free time. You get free periods, which are basically blocks during your day where you don't have lessons scheduled or you don't have anything to do. You know, it's up to you. Um, but you know, it's not really that you're given free time. That free time is given to you under the expectation that you're able to do something productive with it. Now I'm not saying you have to sit down and learn page 73 of your chemistry textbook every single free period, but what I am saying is that there has to be an element of you scheduling yourself, even if it's just very vaguely saying that I'm going to do chemistry today, or I'm going to do biology today, or I'm going to revise this today, you know, there has to be some sort of schedule there that you've come up with. because. You'll realise when you come to the latter parts of your year, so even if you're in year 12, you'll realise when you come to sit your exams that these three periods were almost school or college's way of saying, you know, here's some time just so that you can sit down on your own and understand a lot of the information that we give you. Because to be honest, in year 12 and year 13, a lot of the a lot of the teaching they do will pretty much be throwing information at your faces and you won't get a lot of time in lessons or lectures or whatever to break these things down. And if you can't break these things down, what use is it to you when you come to exams and they ask you a question, for example, on um, condensational reactions versus other reactions? You know, what use is it to you that you've, yes, listened to the information, but don't understand it and can't therefore apply it? Because yes, in GCSEs, you'll have had a lot of questions which are sort of very simple one markers or two markers, but in A-levels, they can ask you to explain things, understand things, demonstrate things. And if you can't analyze a piece of information that someone's given you, how on earth are you going to be able to access those higher marks? So free periods are really there for you to spend time in the library in an ICT block, wherever you want, you know, nobody's saying that you have to go to a library to do this because, you know, when you get to the world of work, no one's telling you to go to an office and do it. You, know, you can go to the library, you can go to the cafe, you can go to a bench outside, you can go wherever you want, but it's there for you to make use of it. Some of you will understand certain parts of the syllabus really easily and some of you won't. And that's fine because everyone's brain works in different ways. Some of you will understand biology more, some of you will understand maths more, some of you will just won't understand either of them. But the free periods are there for you to target what you're not good at, go away and basically understand it. So I would say really use your free periods, but you know, it's okay if there's maybe a few free periods or you're going to the cafe or you're going outside and you're spending time with your friends on a free free periods and you know you're not really doing anything that's fine you know no one's asking you to spend every single free period in the library sat down with a book and that's it and maybe you know a few pens no no one's asking you to do that you can spend a few of them you know doing nothing that's fine you know you've got to sixth form hey why can't you relax for a bit but you should be using them for a little bit of work and um, because even at the start when you might think you know it's the beginning nobody really cares it does actually matter quite a bit, so that's one thing I would say. And I know I spent a lot of time talking about free periods, but it's something that people just don't get the hang of until late into sixth form, which can waste a lot of time. 
Second of all is the teaching, and now I've spoken a lot about this during the free periods bit, but the teaching is vastly different. So a lot of people make these memes about how chemistry, you know, is a lie at GCSE, and that's not necessarily true, obviously, you know, they're not lying to you during GCSEs, but I think it's more that they break it down so much, they make it so superficial at GCSE, that you seem to think that, you know, elements are just elements, and they're made of electrons, atoms, and neutrons, and that's it. You know, that's basically all there is virtually to any material, which, you know, at its core is true, um, apart from, you know, if you go into deep, further chemistry, you know, and you go and talk about further atoms, you know, that is a lot more complicated than just saying that an electron is a particle that moves around a nucleus, because that's not what an electron is. For all of your subjects, A-level teaching is going to be vastly different, and you have to learn to adapt to that. So, for example, in lessons, you can't just be learning what the teacher's telling you. You can write it down in your notes, and you can, you know, make mind maps and make flashcards of it, but you've got to also be aware that it's up to you then to break it down, to learn it, to analyze it. Your teachers will give you pieces of information at a time. So for example, when you're adding X and Y, why is it that the total is X plus Y and why is it not X, Y? You know, you can learn it, fine, you won't be able to access the higher marks. The higher marks require you to understand what you're learning, realize why what you're learning is true, and also being able to apply it. Those are three key things and it's really important that you can learn, understand and then apply and if you just learn this lua keyframe it's really helpful because when you come to sixth form and you're trying to study for your a levels you realize that a lot of the exam papers also which we will talk about are phrased very differently to the way gcse's are phrased and if you can understand this and if you can break this down it means that you'll just naturally perform a lot better in the exams especially if you want to access the higher marks you have to be able to apply yourself to questions and that virtually is all there is to A-levels. Okay, so we've spoken about free periods, we've spoken about exams, what else is there to sixth form? And I think a lot of the talk, a lot of the hubbub around these two years are how much do you have to do? You know, what is sixth form life like? And in short, sixth form life is really cool. You know, sixth form life is really amazing because when you get to sixth form, you're given freedom. And yes, you know, when you're in year seven to 11, you expect to do a lot. You have to study 10 subjects, you know, you're expected to do a musical instrument, you're expected to do clubs and societies. And I feel like when you get to sixth form, a lot of that sort of expectation falls away. A lot of people don't expect you to do clubs and societies because you know, you've got so much going on with your A-levels. And you'll find that when you come to sixth form, you don't really have time to do loads of things that you would have wanted to do. And that might sound a little bit sad, but I feel like that's not entirely true. You can do whatever you want in sixth form, and this is sort of the biggest thing. It is really up to you. You can do as many societies as you like, you can do as little societies as you like, you know. You can do as many musical instruments as you like, you can do as little, you know. You can basically put in as much effort as you want to, but do be aware you'll get whatever you put in. So if you do put in a lot of work, you'll get a lot back out of it, and sixth form is one of those years where it really shows, you know, maybe in year eight and year nine, if you put a lot into it, you don't get a lot back out because there are no exam results, there are no public exams. Um, you also sort of don't get that feeling that you've done it yourself because your teachers are there and everything. And it can feel a little bit demotivating to put work in, which I certainly felt in year eight and year nine and maybe even year 10. And I guess when you get to sixth form, you just gotta realize that you can take it at your own pace. And it's a real luxury that people get. You're given a lot of time to sort of go away. There's very little homework given, you know. You're basically told that Here's the information, here's the textbook, here's the workbook, go away, learn it, come to the lesson, ready. And yes, it feels scary and it's definitely terrifying because you've never been given this element of freedom before. But if you can learn how to handle that, and it, you know, everyone learns how to, you'll realize that it's something really cool because you get to finally personalize your own education. And that sounds really weird in 21st century and you know, really non-specific. And I guess that might not be able to help you. But I guess all it is, is just understanding from the get-go, you've got a lot of work to do, but you get to do it at your own pace. And that is all that sixth form really is. And I hope I've torn down some of the barriers that maybe some of you might feel or some of you might be anxious about because really guys, don't be anxious, don't be worried. It's incredible two years and you will love it so if you've got any other questions if you've got any other queries or worries and um, the comment section down below is basically you can ask me anything if you feel like you want to get in contact without you know telling other people what your worries are fair enough my instagram is there somewhere so you can contact me there um you can also contact my email although 
you know you can just contact my instagram it's easier um but yeah that is really all there is to it um i hope you've enjoyed the video like i said subscribe if you haven't already and i will catch you all in the next video